to Secret Weapons, and today we're taking a look at the Fairfield Circuitry Shallow Water. Uh, this portion of the review is going to be a little bit shorter than it normally would be, because in ranting and raving about how much I dig this pedal, spoiler alert, I really like this pedal, I found that it's really difficult to explain to people what this pedal is, and explain what the different uh, controls kind of do without just showcasing them. So rather than try to run through a point by point of all of this, I think it's gonna be easier to go to our top down camera really quickly. So, and by top down camera, I mean we're just gonna have this little pedal board over here, which I think is out of frame right now. But so if you are completely cold coming into this, this is a modulation pedal. It is a kind of chorus vibrato thing, but with some added weirdness, you have an analog style bucket brigade vibrato chorus in here that is being modulated by this low pass gate and an internal uh, microprocessor that creates kind of a semi-random waveform kind of thing. I only like 30% understand what's happening in this pedal. If you open it up, it's actually incredibly weird and incredibly like dense circuit wise. It's incredible. It sounds, it sounds subtle, I guess is what I should say. I've, I wore headphones for the entire, I have my little in-ears right here. I wore my in-ears for the entirety of recording the uh, intro song and I will be wearing cans for the entirety of the kind of like running through the different settings and everything because I just, I find that it's almost a little difficult to parse exactly what's going on, even through like my studio monitors. I think that that kind of really quiet, focused feeling that you get out of uh, headphones really lets you kind of unlock what's going on in this thing. So my first note on this would be that for sure. It is a subtle, it is a beautiful, it is a kind of quiet moments kind of thing. I can tell you, uh, this mix knob is almost always at full for me. It is a really cool low passy style pedal. So yeah, like I said, I don't wanna to spend too much time trying to describe what this thing does on the front because we are actually going to do a little bit of a knob by knob style approach today, which is a little out of the usual for what we do on this channel. We usually like to play the context game a little more, but uh, we're going to go with a much simpler pedal board and we're just going to actually run through the different controls and how they kind of play with each other and how they kind of interact with each other. The one thing that I will say before we go to that is you can open this thing up and change a trim pot for the sensitivity of the low pass gate as well as an internal JFET boost and a line level adjustment for synths. I've got a lot of friends on Instagram who are big synth people who swear by this pedal. We're not going to do the synth approach today because I just think that other people can do it better than me and it's been done and all that. I instead want to showcase my favorite couple of sounds out of this thing less as a chorus and more out of more as a kind of dry attack and dynamics modulator, which if that seems weird, that's what you're hearing in the intro and that's what we're going to dive into here in a second. So yeah, um, the JFET boost inside of this thing 
I leave it on because I kind of like it to have a little bit of grit, but it sounds really good with or without it. What else is there to say? It's really good. I really like it. Um, Fairfield is a really cool company that has been on my radar for a long time. I've been really impressed with a lot of their stuff. I really like the shallow water. I really, really dig it. That's it. If you like soft, quiet moments that just have an added level of interest to them, look at this. It's probably in your wheelhouse. Let's, let's go to the top-down camera. Okay, so you might be noticing that we're doing a slightly different uh, pedal board setup than you you usually see on this channel. Usually we'd have like, you know, a bunch of stereo effects after a mono effect and do all the things to kind of show the context of how I would usually use a piece of gear. But today I wanted to focus on the subtleties of the shallow water, because like I said, not only do I think that it's better to hear it to understand what it's doing, but I also think that it's very subtle in this way that I think it would get swallowed up really easily by a lot of other delays and reverbs, like uh, like kind of how like a dark analog delay can really easily get swallowed up uh, if you put too much reverb behind it. I think kind of almost anything in front of or behind the Fairfield uh, shallow water will do that enough that you won't be hearing kind of what I like about it in this context. So we're still gonna be using some reverb and some room control and everything on the Iridium, but uh, we're gonna keep things a lot more simple today so we can focus on especially the gate control stuff. That's where you're really gonna hear it shine. Let's go ahead and run through what our dry signal looks like. Um, we are running the Harmony Silhouette guitar with mini humbuckers, the Benson preamp into the shallow water, then into the Quiet 3 Prelude for reverb and the Stram and Iridium for our amp. We are then going into my DAW, which is Universal Audio's Luna, running a Neve 1073 preamp and an 1176 compressor. So that's everything. Let's hear what all that sounds like. <laughs> And before we even get into the modulation side of things, let's turn all that down. I just want to take a moment to point out what a good overdrive this pedal actually is. We talked about an internal JFET boost that is in this thing, and listen to this thing on its own. So no boost. <laughs> That thing is monstrous and stacks well. So obviously you can tame it with volume. And like I said, it's 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 adjustable. There's a uh, there's a jumper internally that allows you to disable that if you don't want it. But I think it sounds really good, and it interacts really really well with that low pass gate, which is going to really kind of pull some of your volume, which helps keep it present in the mix. But when you low pass that JFET boost, you'll also get some really cool kind of darker, grittier, hairier textures. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. I want to start by talking about the rate depth and damp controls down that left side of the pedal. Rate and depth are pretty much standard ideas here. Like if you know modulation, if you know chorusing, if you know bucket brigade style vibrato chorus pedals, you understand what those are. Put all of it at noon, mix it max still, and you'll hear it with a very kind of classic vibrato sound. you might be noticing kind of a weird waveform there. And that's because this damp control takes you from a square wave to a more smoothed out waveform. At minimum, you have a full kind of blocky waveform. And at maximum, you have something that's so subtle that it almost disappears into the mix a little bit. So let's crank that mix in depth and let's hear how the damp control sounds at full square wave status. <laughs> Thank you. 
right in here is where you start getting into like some real, real good chorusing sounds. So yeah, I tend to think that really cranking that rate and depth is pretty useful. And keeping that damp pretty low. I just, I think that the kind of sharper warbles sound really nice on this thing. And it's a very unique sound to this pedal. And sounds really good at full mix. Okay, let's now zero all that back out. And let's and let's go to the low pass gate, the LPG in that top right hand corner. This is the special sauce of this pedal. What does this thing do? This is an envelope follower, like kind of a triggered envelope follower that um, takes your guitar input and opens a low pass filter. Uh, and kind of how much it opens and how much input it takes to start that process is both are both controlled by this control. And you can fine tune it using an internal trim pot that I messed with earlier today to kind of make sure that it was exactly where I wanted it to be. So if we take that all the way down, you'll hear. I'm really digging in there and it's... It's there, you can hear it. But it's not opening for anything. But that allows me to have a good starting point for exactly how far I want this thing to open. So before we start introducing that modulation back in, let's just try to find a sweet spot with no guitar pick where we can really get our dynamics. I think that noon is about my sweet spot on this thing. I'll start with a really soft attack with my fingers and kind of build so you can kind of hear how it opens more. And for context there, I'm kind of doing a staccato style of playing there, but let's 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 make all of our notes legato. Let's let's not kind of cut off the attack on any of those. So for context, this is what I'm playing. If you want it to be a little bit sharper, you can open it up farther and kind of play really soft again. You hear those high notes kind of punch through the mix a little bit more, kind of hitting that low pass gate a little bit harder, which is really cool. Or you can dial it back and really make those notes die a lot quicker and kind of make everything feel a lot gentler.
reintroducing the pick can kind of be helpful if you're really kind of going for that lower gate. Let's add a little bit of delay in and see how that kind of sits in this mix. Once again, like it's a quick attack, but it's a big deal for these subtle parts. Like here's, here's without that filtering happening on the attack of your guitar. Like I said earlier, you can hear that JFET uh, circuit really kind of creating some, some grit underneath that filter, and it's a really cool sound. So like I said, let's take that back up to noon. Let's switch back to playing with our, with our fingers a little bit. And... you man it's real cool you can kind of mix those in a little bit if you want to just have a little bit more kind of presence and by the way this is still obviously without any of the modulation but you can just hear kind of that grit that low pass kind of like slightly resonant jfet boost kind of rising up in the background of this so if you have it without it Like I said, just a tiny bit of mix rolled back. You're still getting, now you've got your like initial attack back, but you're still getting those dynamic rises in the background. Oh yeah, it's also really cool for lead lines as well. Something really soft and subtle. Okay, so how do you make that more interesting, you might be asking, to which I would say, how dare you, this is already so cool. This is like my favorite attack modulator I've played in a long time. But if you want something a little bit more and you want to play something more interesting than whatever John Mayer song off of Continuum this is that I can't remember the name of at the moment, I'll drop some text in uh, so that people watching don't freak out on me. Let's bring in our modulation again and hear how that starts to interact with that low pass gate. You 
you hear that? It's it's subtle with these lower settings, but you can hear those kind of like, especially with that damp dialed way back, you can hear those really subtle kind of lurches in the pitch. Let's open it a little bit more just so it's a little more obvious. So once again, you can tell if the gate's completely open at all times. I feel like you lose a little bit of uh, what I would call kind of the usable sweep of your rate and your depth because it's just that lurching seasick chorusing is always there. But if you can tame some of that so it just comes out with the like harder pick attacks. Okay, let's get one more kind of cool sound that I like dialed. Uh, I think we've pretty much run through both what I love about this pedal and kind of its core crucial features. So let's let's dial up some kind of pretty dark driven Benson tones. And I think right now this is gonna pop the gate too quickly. Yep, that's too much gate too fast. So. Let's roll back the volume, roll back the gate, and then keep that drive nice and high, but really tone down our volume. Let's even add a little bit more drive to that. So once again, like this is what we're playing here. Thank you. 
at a certain point, this stops becoming like a demo and review and just becomes me kind of mindlessly meandering with this pedal. But here's the thing. I have been doing this for like almost all of my free time for the last several days. Like I just plug this pedal in, set basically these exact settings. Usually I'll turn that off and turn that up a little bit. But I usually hit like right around that set and then I just kind of... There's just something so magical about it and so kind of enthralling about what that sound is. I don't know. I can't get away from it. I think it sounds really amazing. I think we're going to call it. This is the Shallow Water by Fairfield. It is technically a modulation pedal, technically a bucket brigade style chorus vibrato. However, if you look at the schematic, if you open it up, if you read the website, you will see it's a lot more than that. And if this video serves as any indication, it is a lot more than any other chorus vibrato I have ever played. Thank you. Fairfield for letting me do this video and uh thank you guys for watching. Uh let's just let's just play it out. Mm -hmm. 